All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to your week eight mentorship. We're going to have fun and talk about title insurance. I know a really boring topic, but I've been doing this a long time and I, and I think I've come up with some strategies and things that if you learn just a little bit about the way we see things, I think you can write a little bit of a better contract and hopefully negotiate a better deal. So first, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Some of you I know, for those of you I've never met. So I was a firefighter up in New York, moved down 20 years ago, 20 days before 9-11. The reason I share that with all of our clients is because we really have one vision here at the title company. And people always ask us what that is. And it's about going in the deal together and leaving the deal together. Just as I did when I was a firefighter, thank God I got out. Who knows where I would have been today if I was still up there. Um, but we really instill that into our clients and into our deals to make sure that you understand you have someone on your team. You have someone that is, is part of the transaction with you. We're not just one of your vendors. We truly want to be a partner of yours in this transaction. I have authored seven books. So the reason I share that with you, you can buy them all on Amazon. We actually give them to the agents. A lot of times, if you come in the office, we'll be happy to give you one. We send them in new agent welcome kits. Uh, but there's everything from title insurance to becoming a better business owner. If you want to become a, an entrepreneur, there, there are just uh, so much information there that, that I like to share with you. Uh, so feel free to, to go to Amazon, check them out, download them. You can buy them. They'll ship them to you. Uh, either way, but they are great books. If you want to grab some copies, just stop by the office. We'll be happy to give you a copy of any one that you would like to read. So a little bit about me. So I, I opened the company back in 2003. Why do I tell you that? 20 years ago. We've been doing this almost 20 years. This July, we'll be celebrating our 20th anniversary in this business. So we've seen a lot. One thing I like to tell people is I'm almost called a licensed title agent. So you're going to deal with either title agency that is owned by a title agent or a real estate attorney. So I'm not a real estate attorney, but I've been doing this 20 years and we've kind of seen just about everything. We've closed over 10,000 deals. So we've probably seen just about everything. Michelle Lady and, and Jackie, they'll tell you there are times when agents bring us problems and, and we really try and become a problem solver for you. So I want you to, to know whether you close with us or you close with another title company, just make sure they're a resource for you. Make sure they're going to have your back and they're going to really strategize on how to get that deal across the finish line. We've been in-house for those of you that know me, those of you that don't know me, I've been in, uh, we've tried to figure it out. It's probably about 15 years now, but definitely over a decade, we've been inside Charles Ruttenberg on our own merit. We're simply there. There's no joint venture. There's no affiliate. It is simply on our merit because of the value we add to the agents. So now let's get into talking about title insurance. Some of you may think it's pretty dry. You'd rather watch paint dry than talk about title insurance. I simply love title insurance. I love what I do. I've been doing it 20 years. So I want to just educate a little bit about the history of title insurance, what it is, and then we're going to get into a lot of things that if you write down some of these notes or replay this video later, I'm also going to send you a recap of everything we talk about today with links to everything. So you don't have to worry about asking, where can I find that? Where can I find this? I'll send you out a recap of all the links. So let's talk about title insurance a little bit. So title insurance covers defects in the title, the history of the property. So unlike car insurance, right? You all drove, you, you drive a car, you take your clients out, you have health insurance, life insurance. Title insurance is, is underwriting a risk that we can see. So where you think about uh, car insurance, health insurance, life insurance, homeowners insurance, that's all about future risk, which is why you pay for it every single year, right? Those annual premiums. You're like, why are these premiums going up? All the insurance carriers are, are dropping people in Florida. So title insurance is a bit different because we're protecting everything that we can already see. So we protect in reverse. We go back to a 30-year period, which is called a root of title, to make sure that the client has the right to use the land. We don't care about the house. We, that's what homeowner's insurance is for. We want to make sure the right, the four corners of the property are that buyers to use without anyone causing any issues. And we'll talk about some of the issues a little bit later. One of the things I like to tell people, a lot of agents think it covers, like we just had an agent call us about uh, an old permit that showed up on a deal. And I like to tell you to understand, that's the number one thing to write down. A permits are not included in title insurance. Some title companies will not even order a permit search unless specifically asked. So it's very important to understand from a title perspective to, to deliver clear and marketable title. We don't care about permits. Permits are not liens on property. 
they don't become a lien until they go into the code enforcement issue and then become a code enforcement violation. And then that violation gets turned in to a lien. That's when it affects title to the property. Now, title insurance also doesn't cover code violations. So we first start with a permit. Permit, maybe work didn't get done. Maybe, maybe they got hit for pulling, uh, doing work without a permit. Then it goes into a code violation status. That's where the city will come in and cite the homeowner for a violation for doing something, whether it was without a permit, maybe not doing it right. And then that code violation will then turn into a lien. And we talk about this when I have the slide that talks about Chapter 159 coverage, which I know uh, the Charles Ruttenberg team sends you out the disclosure that they like you to put in the contract talking about the uh, inspection period, which we'll talk about. But that's called Chapter 159. Those are municipal issues, which basically mean permits, code enforcement, uh, and utility bills. So very, very important. We issue two types of insurance policies, which we're going to talk about. One is the owner's policy. And one is the lender's policy. And when we talk about that on another screen, I'm going to educate you a little bit about some of the things you may hear in a deal so you can better understand when a client says, well, is title insurance optional? Because title insurance is definitely optional, but we don't encourage people to, to exercise that option. We'll talk about what the title insurance commitment is. So we have what's called the Schedule A, B1, and B2. So we'll cover that. So you have a little bit of understanding of what we're looking at. I won't spend too much time on that. But again, understand, moving past this slide, if you can pick up one thing, it is that title insurance does not cover many, many items. So you have to be careful who you are choosing as your title company to make sure they are checking everything. Because if they miss something, or they forget to order a search, it can cause hundreds of thousands of dollars to a buyer should something get missed, like a code enforcement issue that is accruing daily fines. So a couple of questions that we get asked a lot of times are, are is title insurance regulated, right? Are prices regulated? Should we all be paying the same thing? The answer is yes, but. And the reason I say but is because in the state of Florida, Title insurance companies and real estate attorneys are allowed to charge more than what the state tells us the minimum, what we call promulgated rate, which is the minimum amount that we can charge a, a consumer. So there are companies that will charge more. In my book that I authored back in 2009, Title Insurance Tips and Secrets, that was one of my number one tips for the clients, for the consumer to understand what is promulgated rate. So I know what the title company should be charging me. I just had a phone call from a client on Saturday. He was telling me uh, his realtor was trying to convince him to use a different title company. And when they compared our quote side by side with the other one, there was a drastic difference in price. So again, by you as an agent, you as, as the professional understanding what the cost should be, you're able to now save that deal if for some reason, you know, you're selecting a different title company or the buyer says, I want to use this title company you have the education to be able to compare it side by side to know, hey, you know, I understand you want to use your person, but just so you know, their quote is about five to $700 more than what the competition is charging. So just you, so you have a better understanding. Again, it's just another tool for you to negotiate a better deal. So what coverage do I need? I talked about on the previous slide. A lot of people say is title insurance optional. The lender, when they send out the closing disclosure to the buyer, it says, uh, lender's title insurance, or it says owner's title insurance, optional. You see, in the state of Florida, based on promulgated rate, the state says if we charge an owner for title insurance, the lender's insurance is really only $25. But for some reason on this closing disclosure, they quote it out as two full prices. So let's say it was just as an example, $100,000 uh, purchase and $100,000 loan. They would tell you title insurance is actually $600 for the owners and $600 for the lenders, not $600 for the owners and $25 for the lenders. And I've even seen there are some title companies that actually charge a buyer for both. They will charge the full premium for owners and the full premium for lenders, double dipping on that title insurance premium. So again, by you understanding that, that could save your deal. But most importantly, it's going to make you look more credible to your client by understanding that. 
You know, when you hear the seller pushing a title company, always understand it. You know, always understand if you're on the buyer side of a deal, let's say in Palm Beach, and they're pushing a title company for a reason and you just don't feel comfortable, don't be afraid to change it. And we'll talk about that on the next slide when we see what box to check. Obviously, you would love to have the least amount of cost for your buyer, but just because it's customary in Palm Beach for the seller to pick and pay, your buyer has to, to rely on that title insurance. So a lot of our customers in Palm Beach, who if they're the buyers, they say, you know what, I appreciate seller agent that, that your client would like to pick and pay for title, but my buyer would really feel more comfortable having someone representing them. And I'll always tell you the alternative, your buyer can hire an attorney, but do not trust. You know, the next one says, who do I trust? Do not just trust any title company. You want to make sure you are working with someone that you know, you like, you trust, that is credible, that has been doing business for a long time. Now, the reassurances that you need are people that will step up to the plate when there is a claim. And that's very, very important. There are times where things get missed. Maybe a utility bill wasn't collected for. We just actually had one that there was a, um, a gap in time between when the utility bill was issued and it wound up being $5,000 utility bill. Very rare. There must have been a, a broken water pipe. But that client came back to us as the buyer and I said, no problem. We've got you covered. And we cut the check for $5,000. Did we have to? No, because it's not a covered title insurance claim. We would have to then say, you have to go back and sue the buyer. But as the title insurance company, we pride ourselves on making sure we have your back. And you need to make sure whoever you are selecting for your buyer, or if you're listing in Palm Beach, whoever you select for your seller to, to represent that transaction, make sure they're going to stand behind their product. Very, very important. And one of the things I talk about are, are who picks the closing date. I have a YouTube video talking about this. You know, you want to always make sure you as a, a buyer's agent selecting the closing date, right? You want to make sure you're not picking a Friday. You're not picking the last day of the month. We can still not understand in the business why agents always pick the last day of the month or a Friday. Now, I understand they want to get it closed so the buyer can get keys and move into their house on Saturday, a good agent will always select the middle of the week and not the end of the month, not the 15th, not the 1st, not the 30th, not the days that rents due, mortgage payments are due. Pick a day in the middle of the week, not the beginning or the end of the month, and you will make yourself look that much better. The lenders are not going crazy. The agents are not going crazy. Uh, the banks are not going crazy. Everything does not have to happen last minute. Now, we close about 50 to, to 70 deals per month, and we see it all of the time. My staff will tell you, Friday, craziest day. The end of the month, if you walk in this office now coming up on this Friday, I think it's the 30th, the last day, it's going to be chaos in the office. Five, six, seven people want to close on the same day, and everyone's standing here waiting for the lender to send a closing package, the wire to get here. People want to get checks. People want to get keys, the moving truck. So you can be a much better agent by just simply selecting a much better day for you to close. Now let's talk about the, um, which box do I check? You'll see in the, in the contract, you have three boxes to check. The box one is the seller. Seller picks title company, seller selects the closing agent. Box number two is buyer picks the title company, but the buyer also pays for the title search and the lien search. Very, very, very important that that option is gonna cost your buyer more money. And I always laugh because agents that will select, you know, if we have a, a deal here in Broward or Miami, they select box two and I ask why? If box three says Miami-Dade Broward provision, why wouldn't you select box number three? Box number three basically means the buyer's gonna pick and pay for title insurance, but the seller is gonna pay for all of the searches in order to deliver clear and marketable title over to the buyer. So again, any box is okay to check. Every scenario is different. You can always call us to understand which box is better to check. But as a rule of thumb, box one and box three are the two boxes. If the seller is picking and paying, you would select box one. If the buyer is picking and paying, you would select box number three. We get presented a lot of times with es escrow disputes. We, ha we have hundreds of escrow disputes going on over the years, and it's always for common issues. So again, this whole webinar is to teach you about how to be a better agent, right? It's a mentoring webinar, how to be a better agent from our perspective. So if you can understand from our perspective of the common mistakes the agents make, you'll be a much better agent. 
So we talk about the effective date. Understand the effective date is the last day all parties sign the contract and start counting days. I used to own a real estate company about eight, 18 years ago before I moved into Charles Ruttenberg as the title company. And I used to teach my agents to set up a Google calendar and have a, a dates written down in their folder where they kept their contract to know what is coming up when. Because if you miss one date, you could potentially cause your buyer to lose their deposit. So again, very, very important. What are some of your common dates, your inspection period, your code uh, and permit check, which is included in your inspection period. Now, it wasn't always included in there. Now it is included, which we'll talk about on, on a slide later that I told you about. The financing contingency, very, very important. We'll talk about that as well. The loan commitment, now called the loan approval. For those of you that have been practicing real estate for a long time, it used to be called the loan contingency, the loan commitment period. Now it's your loan approval period. And everything must, must, must be in writing. Very, very important. We get told all the time, hey, I have this in text message or this agent told me this on the phone. Everything must be in writing. For those agents that have been an agent for a while, you know when you take that continuous uh, continuing education, your 14 hours, I think, there's always a question on there talking about should things be in writing? This agent told this agent, is it legally enforceable? If it's not in writing, you're not going to be able to prove it was done. A couple of agents always ask me, how do I write a better contract? So we decided to create a video. So again, I'm going to send you this link. You don't have to worry about it. You'll just remember when you see the link, what I talked about on our YouTube channel. It's called Smart Contracts FL. We did a 20 minute overlay side by side on how to fill out a better contract, how to fill out a smarter contract. So you write better offers. That's simply the only reason to do it. We want to make sure your deals get accepted over your competition. Now, two things we talked about on the previous slide was talking about the loan approval. It used to be the, the loan commitment. It's now loan approval. We have seen agents get burned. Uh, I'm sure lady can tell you claims they've seen where, where a buyer has now lost their deposit because the agent went past the loan approval period. Years ago, it used to be called the loan commitment. The buyer would have 45 days to produce a loan commitment to say the bank committed to doing the, the loan with these conditions, and then we would move on. If nobody said anything, it would just automatically extend. So 45 days would become 50 days, would become 60 days if the seller never challenged the loan commitment period. Now they changed it from 45 days to 30 days, and they changed it to a loan approval Meaning on day 31, if the buyer does not cancel, their loan is deemed approved, which means if on day 35, they get denied financing, they lose their deposit. So again, very, 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 very important. This is one of the biggest things you need to realize when we talk about your contingencies and your timeframes in your contract is the loan approval period. Know your 30 days. And I always say, deal with it on day 28. Don't take the chance to go to day 30. Deal with it on day 28. The second issue that we're always seeing are lien search matters. Now, this is the clause that I know uh, the Charles Ruttenberg team has for you, which would be put into your contract. It was drafted by a very well-known real estate attorney uh, in Florida. It's to protect the buyers because the contract is very seller-driven. But it basically says that the contract says in the inspection period, permits must be uncovered within the inspection period. Well, you're never gonna get permits to be uncovered within the inspection period. There's not enough time for that to happen. So this clause excludes the permits and makes it the seller's responsibility to cure prior to closing at their expense. That's all it basically says. So it says, instead of it being the buyer's responsibility to figure out permits, within a 15 day inspection period, it basically says that the seller at the seller's expense will correct any open, close, expired permits prior to closing. Very, very, very important. This puts the contract back to where it was originally, where it was fair for all parties. Right now the contract is drafted and it is very seller sided. Now, again, if you're representing the seller, you may not wanna put this clause in your contract. Although I think it's the right thing to do, because we always wanna make sure it's a fair deal for everybody. But again, as I said, when I first started, some title companies that represent a seller don't even order a municipal search because it's not required for title insurance. So unless asked, they don't pull it. 
which gets me to where I talk about different title uh, title searches. So we have uh, different types of searches that we do. We have a lean search, which is not actually leans. Again, one day I may try and and uh, go up the chain to to our our national board to change the way they they. Uh, name these searches. This is called the lean search, which are municipal items, anything unrecorded. Anything unrecorded are things we can't see by pulling a search. So these are going to be water bills, uh, utility bills, not Florida Power and Light, unless you are up in Lake Worth, like the Lake Worth where they have their own power company. Those could be liens, but FPNL is not a lien against the property. But these are municipal issues. So it could be a water bill. It could be um, a tenant business license, some type of business license required. It could be code enforcement permits, open, closed, expired, you know, things that you're not going to be able to see just in the public record. Then we pull what's called the title search, which is everything we can see in public record, mortgages, liens, judgments, divorces, HOA liens, um, uh, bankruptcies, divorces. I mean, there's so much stuff we can see in public record. That's what we pull a title search. It's usually tied to the buyer or seller's name and usually tied to the legal description of the property. So we will order both types of searches. But remember, as an agent, ask the title company to make sure they are pulling a municipal lien search, which is number one. They'll pull a title search because that is covering uh, title matters. But the municipal lien search is not covering uh, title matters. So you want to make sure, hey, by the way, do you pull a municipal lien search and does it include code enforcement, open, closed and expired permits? You wanna make sure that they do that. We also pull a tax search to verify taxes. Uh, I have a cool video on our YouTube channel where I went up against the tax collector because they basically told us that taxes were paid. We said taxes were unpaid. They sent us a letter saying taxes are paid. We didn't pay the taxes that showed due because we had their letter verifying it. A year and a half later, our client got a foreclosure notice for a tax deed sale. We went back to them and they say, oh, human error, we made a mistake. So we wound up having to pay the $5,400 in past due taxes. And then we got on the news basically to showcase how the tax collector said they were paid, to put a letter in writing saying it was paid. And even then when it still wasn't paid, they didn't cover their mistake. So that's where title insurance is super important. But more important, that's where the title company is super important because to submit that claim is a long process. So title companies should be able to step up and cut that check, no questions asked. And then we pull what's called an OFAC name search, which basically is for money laundering. We want to check all of the money laundering sites and uh, terrorist form forums to make sure that none of the names are on uh, terrorist forums. So if the title company you're closing with calls you and says, hey, I need their date of birth, I need their social, I need their middle name, that's typically why, because something came up on an OFAC search, either for an incoming wire or an outgoing wire which is where this stuff comes up to make sure we clear their names. So title insurance itself, we talked about the, the different types of searches that we have. Title insurance itself, we issue what's called a title commitment at the beginning. The title commitment is basically the, the insurance binder. So you know, like if you go get homeowner's insurance, they give you a binder. You don't get your policy till three months later. Why do you usually have that insurance binder? Or why do you carry a temporary insurance card when you get insurance, right, on your car or health insurance? You carry a temporary insurance card until they issue you the, the permanent insurance. But why do most people leave the closing table without a title commitment? I'm going to tell you where this comes into play is when the title company goes out of business and your client has a title claim, they're going to ask you, well, who's the title company? And you're going to say, oh, ABC Title Company. Who was the underwriter? Well, I don't know. How would I know that? It would be on your title commitment. That is your temporary insurance binder. So you always want to make sure when you sit at the closing table with your client, you are going to sound like an educated professional. When you tell that title company, hey, can I get a marked up title commitment before we leave the, the closing? That's going to be the temporary insurance binder saying we've cleared everything. And if you have a title claim, here it is, just in case you don't get your policy. And I will tell you, title companies go out of business quickly. Uh, so be very, very careful. So you want to get that title insurance, title insurance commitment. The two other policies we issue, we talked about were the owner's policy and the lender's policy. Very self-explanatory. Owner's policy covers who? The owner. Lender's policy covers who? The lender. So if the buyer is buying cash deal, they can buy uh, only a, simply an owner's policy. 
if they're getting a loan, the lender is going to require a policy as well. Again, we talked about it earlier, but when you hear the conversation saying, well, the lender is saying uh, the owner's policy is optional. Yes. What you do is you say, pause. Let me call the title king on the phone. He will explain to you exactly what that means. And if there is a significant savings, because sometimes there is. Like, like I had a client that just bought a property for $6.9 million and his loan was only $300,000. So for him, getting an owner's policy for $6.9 million is a lot more costly than just getting a lender's policy for $300,000. I mean, for $3 million. But most people, when the purchase price is close to the loan, so like, let's say your lo loan is, you know, 450000 and you're buying a house for 500000 or 550. It's so close. The expense for the additional insurance is so minimal. It's not double as to what they um, show them on that disclosure. That disclosure is meant, all it does is scare them, the closing disclosure. Um, so always tell them, put them on the phone with me, even if I'm not the title company. Just put them on the phone with me and I will explain to them exactly what it means in two minutes or less. By the way, how are you going to get my cell phone number? At the end, I'm going to send you a link. It's going to have it. So you just save my contact right to your phone. You'll have it. You can text me, call me, no problem. So let's talk about the title commitment, what the title commitment shows, just so when you're sitting there and you ask for a title commitment, what question is your buyer going to ask? Well, what's that? You'll have a better understanding of it. You can watch, replay this video to learn. Uh, but basically, a title commitment has three schedules. Schedule A is the important part. <clears throat> That's the property and the buyer's name. Most important, the buyer's name and the seller's name to make sure the seller is who the seller is, the buyer is who the buyer is, and the names are spelled correctly. Very, very, very important. We've seen mistakes. So you always want to make sure that, you know, Schedule A matches your buyer's name. Very important. Schedule B1 is everything that we say we're going to take care of. These are called requirements. So we basically say in order to ensure title of the property, these are the things we need to, to clear up. And then Schedule B2 are exceptions to the policy. Again, very, very, very important. If you ever want an in-depth class on a title insurance commitment, I'm happy to give you one if you really want to learn. But again, you'd probably rather watch paint dry than talk about exceptions on a title policy. But many title companies will simply throw things that they cannot clear as exceptions to the policy because the chances that they become a claim are very, very, very minimal, which is why you only pay title insurance once, not every year. But because of that, they basically will take these low risks, like maybe an old mortgage from, from a previous owner. Instead of clearing it, they're going to throw it as an exception and say, buyer, it's your problem, not mine. What buyer is reading a title commitment? What real estate agent is reading a title commitment? Nobody. So by understanding what these issues are, what is on there, you're going to be like, wow, I don't think that belongs there. We need to address it. Again, a little bit more advanced. I'm happy to teach a class on that at a later date. This was just more to give you the basic education on what we look at and some of the things you can look at in order to be a better agent. So let's talk about charges. Some of the common charges. I know Michelle wanted me to talk about some of the common charges for some of the newer agents. So number one charge you want to make sure is right. How many times will hear agents, they're complaining about title companies. My commission was wrong. Has it happened to us? We've made mistakes as well. Was the commission wrong? Maybe the purchase price adjusted and it didn't get calculated to the new amount. So agents, always make sure you get a preliminary closing statement from the title company, making sure what? Your commission is right. I know that sounds a little self-serving, but this is how you're eating. This is how you're feeding your family. Make sure your commissions are right. Second, make sure your brokerage fee is on there. I know Charles Rutenberg, I think they charge $3.95. Make sure the brokerage fee is on there. Why? Because if it's not on there, it's coming out of your commission. So if the buyer agreed to pay it, make sure it's on the closing statement. Very, very, very important. The two most important things for you as an agent to look at is the money, the dollars and cents going in your pocket. Now, lender's charges, again, very important. Feel free to compare lender to lender to see what are the charges? Who's charging more? Why? Is it because an interest rate's a little bit higher? So you want to be able to know what are standard lender charges, right? Ask the lenders. Have an idea on what standard lender charges are. Do they charge a underwriting fee? What do they charge for an appraisal fee? What do they charge for, for um, you know, discount points? Very important. 
lean search and title search. I talk about these from the sense of, yes, they're going to be charged, but title companies charge more than the invoiced amount to the vendor. So like my vendor charges $75 for a title search. I can easily charge $150, easily double it. And nobody would know the difference. I'd make an extra $75 per closing. You do the math times 70 closings a month times 12 months. It's a lot of money. That's where title companies will pad their fees. So it's not only their, their settlement charge, but it's also gonna be padded in the lien search and the title search. Title insurance we talked about, again, you have to understand what promulgated rate is and how much the simultaneous issue is. I will explain to you on the next slide exactly where to go to know that, but you'll be able to check to know exactly what the charge should be. They shouldn't be charging more. They're charging $100 more, okay, I mean, you wanna go with it. But for someone that's charging a few thousand dollars more, be very, very, very careful. Survey and elevation certificate, again, if your buyer's buying a home and it's not a condo, you want to make sure they're getting a survey. Even a cash deal, I suggest people getting a survey. Lady could tell you her brother that, that worked for us years ago, he was doing a closing and it wound up coming back where, where the bank foreclosed on a property. We did, uh, the buyer didn't want a survey. They didn't realize that the bank only foreclosed on the front half of the property. The pool in the back of the house was actually a separate lot. So the foreclosed owner came back two years after paying two years of taxes and told that buyer, get out of my swimming pool. And he wound up having to negotiate, I think, fifteen or $20,000 to buy the pullback because the buyer opted not to get a survey to realize the legal description that the bank was selling them, which is the legal description we pulled, what was on the contract, didn't include the pool, which was a separate lot. So again, it's not a title matter because the buyer chose not to get a survey. So again, surveys are very, very, very important. Now, low risk. That's really the only that's a, two survey claims in 20 years I've ever seen. So that was one of them. And there was one more on a pie shaped lot. So if it's a weird shaped lot, always tell buyers get a uh, survey. Very important to make sure the boundary lines are, are set properly. Attorney's charges, very important as well. If your buyer did not hire an attorney, do not let the seller's attorney charge them an attorney fee. We tell buyers and agents all the time, send a simple email to the attorney saying, where is your retainer agreement in order to charge my client an attorney fee? And guess what happens? That $750 attorney fee gets removed. They will try. They will put it on there. So you need to understand when you're looking at a closing statement, and we can go more in depth on, on a whole nother training about what's on a closing statement and where is it? These are just kind of a, a general training on, on the terms of things that you want to look at. Doc stamps are on the deed. That's basically uh, doc stamps are charged on the purchase price of the property. So again, very standard charge. You want to make sure it's charged to the seller typically, unless it's in the contract that someone pays otherwise. And then the last one are the prorations for HOA and taxes. This is one of the big ones I talk to newer agents about because they always say, well, the quote said uh, closing costs were only going to be $4,800. Why is my client having to come to closing with $6,500? I say, well, there are prorations for homeowners association dues. So if the seller already prepaid for a year, that buyer now has to come to closing to give that seller a credit. So you always want to be aware of when are taxes and insurance paid, when is uh, HOA dues paid, and then how does that get prorated? Again, very important because that could make or break one of these clients that are first time home buyer, have limited amount of funds to, to pay. And then all of a sudden at closing, they're gonna have to come up with a lot more money that they didn't have. So again, understanding a closing statement in depth, looking at it on paper, I'm happy to sit down with any of you. We can pull one, sit down, go over it, see what it looks like. So you better understand when you're looking at it. Most agents, if they look at their commission, that's a lot. They don't really look at the rest of the stuff. But again, you want to provide a better service to your client. So again, very, very important. So closing cost calculator is very important. That's what I told you where you can get it, titlerate.com. Again, that link will go out to you at the end of this webinar. But the closing cost calculator, it has a seller's net sheet. It's got preliminary HUDs, CDs. You can set up an account, use it for free without setting up an account, set up an account, save your quotes, whatever you'd like to do. It is a fantastic calculator for you to use free of service. Now, if you have a website that you control, meaning the code, not like the templated website, 
that your office gives you. But if you actually control your own and you can feed um, code into it, we can send you code on there for a website widget. It's free for you to put the calculator on your website, but you have to just be in control of the, the backend coding of your website. And then you can get access to this same exact website. It'll be a website widget right on your website. Now let's talk about forgery and fraudulent transactions. I don't know anybody in this business that knows more about this than me. And I'm not just telling you that, I'll prove it to you on the next couple of slides, but make sure we're doing wire transfers. Very, very, very important. Deals must be funded via wire transfer only. If you be very careful agents too, don't send wiring instructions to your buyer. Make sure your client calls the title company directly and gets them. You want to remove yourself from any wire talk via email. Very, very, very important. I'll show you in a few minutes. Deeds have to have witnesses and notaries. When you see quick claim deeds, you want to always be alert. I had an agent called me last Saturday. He bought a property himself. He was an agent and owned a title company. And all of a sudden, he got a phone call on Saturday that it was a fraudulent transaction. Even the agents are getting spoofed and the title companies are getting spoofed. So you just want to be so, so careful. When someone calls you to list a property, you want to make sure you're independently verifying who they are. See their photo ID. If someone emails you, don't just communicate through email that you got this big listing. You're going to get so excited. Oh, my God, this person, a $250,000 listing. They found me on the Internet. They're probably fake. Most people aren't Googling an agent and calling them for, for uh, a $250,000 listing, no questions asked. Another red flag sometimes are agents that are, are sellers that don't question how much you're going to charge them in commission. Automatically, 3%, no problem. They don't ask questions. Most clients will negotiate. They will at least try. Is that the best you can do? Is there any other options to maybe reduce it a little bit, save some extra money? So be careful for the people that are so eager, eager sellers, desperate sellers. Just be very, very careful because we're seeing more and more fraud, which we'll talk about again in a minute. My spouse is out of the country. They can't sign again. Very, very important. Spouses need to sign. Spouses typically need to sign if it's a homesteaded property. You always want to ask yourself the question, does the spouse need to sign? Again, seller's proceeds when you're dealing with wire transfers, be very, very, very careful. Wire fraud is going crazy right now. So be very careful. When you pull up your, your property appraiser site and you see quick claim deeds, again, be very, very careful. You need to do the research. A little tip for you guys, as a, if you're going to be a seller's agent, you go on the property appraiser site and you see Mr. and Mrs. Smith own 1234 Main Street. You know Mr. Smith and Mrs. Smith don't live in that house. Property appraiser has another address, maybe an address in Utah. Send them a letter. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I look forward to working with you on the closing of your transaction. Now, if you were really working with that seller, they're going to get that letter and be like, oh, that's super cool. Thanks for the letter. Appreciate it. But if it's not really the seller, they're going to call you and be like, say what? You're who? And you're doing what? Very, very, very important. These little tips will save you from an errors and omissions claim, save you from getting to the closing table to realize it's fraudulent. You've done all this work for nothing. One little step by sending a letter to a seller, thanking them for the opportunity to, to list their home could win you the deal. Now, obviously, if they live there, it's a totally different story. I'm talking about if it's a rental property, maybe a vacant lot, you want to always independently communicate with them, not just the way they communicate with you, but try and find their information uh, by independent third party. And electronic funds, again, be very, very careful. Ruttenberg does not hold a, a escrow. We hold escrow for the office for, for you know over a decade. So uh, feel free to, to work with us on the escrows, but don't take escrow to you. If an agent says, I'm going to give you, I'll put the money in your account and then use it. Be very careful. Don't work on electronic funds. Don't work on, on, I try not to work on personal checks, but if you have to take one, it just takes a little bit of time to clear. But again, there's so much fraud going on. The scams are huge. Like, hey, cash this check 
and you only need to give me part of it. You can keep part, like these scams all day long. One of my best friends called me the other day. His wife got scammed for $1,500. Very sophisticated in real estate. He got scammed to go buy an Amazon gift card, scratch it off and give them the numbers, thinking it sounded totally legit. So they're getting good, these scammers. You will not be a victim. Now, how can you stop a lot of this? Two-factor authentication in your email. Very, very, very important. One of the biggest things you can do is set up two-factor authentication with your email service. That's where you're going to log into your email with a username and password, and then they're going to text you a code to your phone or to your Google Authenticator app, and you're going to have to enter that six-digit code into Google in order to access it. Very, very, very important. Two-factor authentication. So I told you I'll prove to you a little bit how I know about forgery and fraudulent transactions. So this was our most recent. You can see this all on our website, titlerate.com. We were on CBS News the other day for saving a lady in Miami. She owned five lots, fraudulent transaction, fraudulent seller. They had her photo ID. They had her license. They had everything. They just changed out her picture. So we uncovered it and stopped it. It's a really cool video. This one is actually the newest one and it's on the homepage of our website. So just feel free to go check it out. I think it's a three or four minute video. But again, we stop these things all the time. We know how to sniff it out. The agents are the ones that are getting um, sold a dollar uh, and a scam. And, and these scams are going through every single day. This is the lady, Patricia. We saved a $63,000 house. This was her agent's fault. Her agent's email got hacked. They were monitoring her agent's email that a transaction was going down. This lady, Patricia Verlino, I got on Fox News in New York on this one. She was um, about to close. She worked three jobs, her entire life saving 63,000. She wired to the title company that her agent told her to, but it really wasn't her agent. It was a fraudster. That money, gone. So we were able to set up a GoFundMe. We were able to recover the money. Uh, we, we raised... Um, 30000 on GoFundMe. We were able to recover half of the money back from her bank. And then we were able to close on our home. Now, we weren't doing the closing initially. This was another title company in um, uh, Aventura doing the closing. And her agent worked for another. She came to me after the scam already happened. So we jumped in to save her and, and help her out. But again, it happens every single day. And this was one of the one I was most famous for. This was a sting operation. This gentleman on the bottom right, Henry Ferguson, is sitting in prison right now for um, five counts of grand theft, forgery. He was a fraudulent seller pretending to be a, a, a seller of a property. He wasn't. What you don't see in this picture is right behind me. They made me do the closing are the federal agents right behind that wall ready to barge in because he was a convicted armed robber. He was out on parole for, he did 10 years for armed robbery and assaulting a police officer. So they weren't sure how violent he was. Um, but again, that's a pretty cool video to watch. You see here, it was on the news and the surveillance in the top right. They even used our surveillance for it because it was better than the ones the uh, FBI had, which is super weird. Um, but again, another cool story to just check. We're on top of this. So we're here to, to educate you on, on how to not become a victim, how to close more deals, how to be more educated and win more deals. So hopefully you have found value in that um, with everything that I'm telling you. So we talked a little bit about code violations and, and permits. Remember, rule number one, they're what? They're not covered in title insurance, right? They're not covered. So utility bills can become liens like that one we had for $5,000. The problem is they're not a lien at the time of closing. So what happens is they become a lien later. Your buyer is going to call who? You and say your title company or my house. And now you have to deal with it. So again, very important when these things are not covered, someone has to have the clients back. And that someone has to be me. So you need to make sure whoever you're using is going to have your clients back. Remember permits. You want to order permit searches. They are not not, not covered in title insurance. Code enforcement violations. Just because a code enforcement violation says it's $400, they accrue daily fines. So title companies need to be aware of it, but you also need to be aware of it, that if there's a code violation on a property, they accrue daily fines. They can be mitigated. We've worked with many of the Charles Ruttenberg agents to uh, mitigate these fines, go be before the special magistrate to get them reduced. Um, but they can. So don't be scared if you get a, someone calls you foreclosed property, lots of code enforcement violations, just call me. I've been doing this for a long time. I'll help navigate that deal. These are some of the sloppier deals that we can get closed and, and get you paid. 
I told you earlier, make sure they're pulling a lean search, not just the title search. So lean search or municipal issues, code enforcement, permits, utility bills, very, very, very important. And make sure that the title insurance gives you chapter, removes 159 coverage. So they're giving you coverage for lien search matters if they pull a lien search. That's a big question when you get that title commitment that you can ask them at the closing table, are you giving the buyer chapter 159 coverage? And they're gonna cross it off on the title commitment saying, yes, we've removed it and we're giving them coverage. Because what happens is if they have a code matter later, they're going to say, well, you have no coverage. And they're going to come back to you and they're going to submit a claim uh, to your ENO insurance. Not that your ENO is going to cover it, but do you want a client giving you a claim or do you want a client giving you a referral? I'd rather have a client giving me a referral all day long than a claim. So again, very important to understand what code and permit matters as they relate to the inspection period, as they relate to the title commitment, and as they ultimately relate to your buyer having stress when it gets to a point of a issue. I always put this one in here because many of the agents work with clients, they call, you know, doing a refinance. So it has nothing to do with obviously your mentorship here, but sometimes you're going to hear a client, oh, they're doing a refinance. What lender should I use? <clears throat> Just know they have the right to pick the title company. They should be calling a title company like myself or whoever you refer to, because I know not every agent chooses me. Hopefully you do. Um, but it's not always the case. So again, if you get uh, uh, approached with an opportunity for a refinance, please feel pass them on to us. We'd love to uh, handle it. We The one big thing on this is the borrowers have the right to choose title, not the lender. It's not the lender's choice. It is the buyer's choice because the buyer is paying. And then I end with this and then we'll wrap it up here because we only have a few more minutes. One of the most important slides for whatever reason, if you don't choose me, you've never worked with me, you wanna, you wanna look for a few different people, does your title company have an office? Can you walk into their office that isn't just an executive suite that they pay $200 a month for and they may be, they may be there Monday, Wednesday, Friday from the hours of like 11 to two? Do they have an office like mine with employees? Do they have a client base? Have they been in-house with a real estate brokerage for over a decade? Do they offer you value, whether it's our books, whether it's our trainings? Can they talk about title insurance? Can they teach you how to, how to save deals? Or do they just simply want your title business? Very important. Are they looking out for you? So hopefully you've gotten my common theme of this entire presentation is about you, the agent, how you can be better, how you can write a better deal, how you can win a better client, and ultimately you can get more referrals. That's what we teach at Charles Ruttenberg. I normally don't do title presentations. Normally it's I'm teaching you about social media, about networking, but this one's super important because now more than ever, the more you learn, the more you earn in this business. You will get referrals time and time again when you come in and you know what you're talking about. Does the client have a website, right? Does the title company have a website? Well, we sure do. Do they have three employees? Again, very, very important because one's out sick, one's on vacation. And now they say, well, we'll get to that tomorrow. We just can't handle it. I know one attorney who goes on vacation. He's like, I'm just not closing any deals this week. I'm on vacation. I don't have anyone else. So just make sure you're working with someone who has been around and they're experts at what they do. I put up one testimony here. This is a niche. He runs the um, BPM RIA, which is the Broward Palm Beach, Miami Real Estate Investors Association. He is also one of your agents here. He teaches a real estate boot camp. So he's an agent at Ruttenberg for many, many years. But again, he talked about, you know, fortunate to work with us. He's worked with us for a long time. I don't need to read the whole testimonial. But if you look on our Google page, we have over 250 reviews. A lot of them are agents, people that have just had a wonderful experience. Last thing I want to end with before I have one ask for you, and I'll give you all of my information, um, is my motivational message for this year. Selling the dream requires you to put in the work required to fulfill the dream. In fact, your clients need to see that you are winning and moving towards that dream in order for them to follow. You know, I've been doing this 20 years and, and people always ask me, like, what is the key to success? And I say, people just love the opportunity to work with positive people. They want, they want to work with people that want to win. So hopefully you'll be able to do that. Come up with your dreams. Go out there and just set your goals or ready for next year. Like we're already almost at October. So you literally, and now we're getting into the holiday season. So it's going to be slow, November and December. So now is your time to put your plan in place for 2023.
And hopefully that includes us on your team, the Charles Ruttenberg team on your, on your team as an asset in order to close more deals and have your best year ever as we move into 2023. So there is my contact information. You can screenshot that, take a picture of it. Uh, I will again, email you as soon as this is over. Um, as we are ending here with only four minutes left, the only thing I like to ask is if you thoroughly enjoyed this presentation, when I send you that email, the first link will be a Google link. If you can simply, you can just click five stars if you want, four stars, three stars, whatever you thought about the presentation. But if you'd love to leave a kind word, I would greatly appreciate it. It literally takes two seconds to do. Uh, but definitely helps us earn better clients and earn more clients like you. Um, and, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Some of you I work with, some of you I'm meeting for the first time. Uh, but we are here as a resource. We are directly next door to the Charles Rutenberg office. So if you look at that building, just to the left is our building, or you just simply call our office. We will run right next door uh, to meet with you and answer any questions you have. And again, as I said, I will email you as soon as this is over with links to everything, including my personal cell phone, which will be in my V card. You just simply save it to your phone. It will have links to everything I talked about today. That's all I have. I ended three minutes early if anyone has any questions.